Hey, good morning, friends. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is Brother Mike from Sun City, Arizona. Welcome to uh, Sunday morning. The deep things of God with Brother Mike, the deepest of all things we're going to talk about today. Of course, Resurrection Sunday. This is the day where uh, most people in the United States celebrate the resurrection of Christ. I celebrate it. Uh, 365 days a year, but it is, uh, as you can imagine, the most spectacular event in the history of humanity, bar none. It is the greatest event of all time, the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. Um, if you need to get a hold of me, you can send me an email at mike at hardcorechristianity.com. Our ministry line number is 602-636-5800. And uh, you can uh, follow all of my teachings and the other teachings at the Arizona Deliverance Center with Julie, Brother Rick, and several others on our YouTube teaching channel, youtube.com slash Healing. AZ, House of Healing AZ. And uh, I do have available the miracle list. I'll send it out to you today if you send me an email. It's a step by step guide to being healed and delivered. It works 100% of the time for everyone who actually does the list. It actually works 100% of the time. The thing is incredibly miraculous. If you need an exemption for the next, uh, virus farce and the next vaccine hoax you can send me an email again mike at hardcorechristianity.com i'll send you the uh, religious exemption form immediately and uh, if you are filing your taxes and you were kind enough to donate money to us last year we thank you for that we had another record year with donations send me an email and i'll send you out your uh, receipt for your donations if you are um, filing your taxes long form, send it out to you right away. And uh, thank you for all your support. It was a fantastic 2022 and 2023 is shaping up even better. So we thank you for that. We love you guys. The resurrection of Christ from the dead. Now I went through all four gospels and I put together a timeline for you that, as far as I know, no one has ever done before. I could never find it on any other uh, Christian site. So I thought I would share it with you. Just go back 2,000 years with me, if you will. It's a Sunday morning. It's very early in the morning, um, just before sunrise, that break on Sunday morning. And uh, Jesus is raised from the dead. The tomb is opened. The stone is rolled away from the tomb. And the guards from the Sanhedrin, the Jewish guards that were guarding the tomb, there were four, what, four or five of them. They are slain in the spirit, so to speak. They are blasted. And they are unconscious. And Jesus walks out of the tomb with his new resurrected body, the Holy Spirit raising from the dead, and everything in the Word of God, Old and New Testament, was then guaranteed to be true, and all the prophecies, Old and New Testament, were guaranteed to be fulfilled. Everything was sealed that day, on a early Sunday morning, very early, and your healing, your deliverance, your miracles, your blessing, your eternal life, on and on it goes. Every conceivable blessing from God was sealed, guaranteed, and assured on a Sunday morning about 2,000 years ago. It was absolutely spectacular. Well, let's go through the timeline real quick. After he's raised from the dead, uh, he goes somewhere. Where he goes, we don't know. The guards are, as you know, prostrated. Uh, the Jewish guards from the Sanhedrin. 
And the women come to the tomb very early Sunday morning, a group of women, several of them are named. Um, and they get to the tomb, as you remember, and they meet the angels. The, the thing is empty. And the angels will tell everybody else that um, he's raised from the dead. He's raised from the dead. And one of the women at the tomb that morning was Mary Magdalena. Well, the group goes back to the disciples and they tell them he's raised from the dead. He's not there. So Peter and John run back to the tomb after they hear that. They don't believe them. So they go back to check it and they find something incredible. The, the, the stones rolled away and the, the grave clothes that they wrapped him in are laying there. But the napkin that was wrapped around his head, the napkin is folded up nice and neat and set over on the side. And I think the Lord Jesus did that so that when the devil came to the tomb to find out what happened, he would notice that napkin over there. And it was a sign to the devil that uh, you screwed up. You screwed up huge. And your fate and your doom is sealed. As I mentioned in the past, when Jesus was butchered and murdered on the cross of Calvary, Satan did it. That was the first time in human history that a completely, totally innocent person had been executed by Satan. Everybody else was born in sin. Everybody else sinned, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And so everybody else died a sinner and deserved to die because they were born in sin and they sinned. When the devil murdered Jesus in cold blood, it was the first time in human history that a completely, totally innocent person had been murdered. And when that happened, the devil forfeited his kingdom and he was lost for eternity. There is no redemption of any kind available for Satan, fallen angels, and demons. Nephilims, you name it. All of them die and they all burn in hell for eternity. Well, you know, after that, um, Jesus uh, appears to Mary Magdalena at the tomb. And uh, she mistakes him for the gardener. Then you'll recall after that, the next day, on the road to Emmaus, Jesus appears to two people. Bible scholars think it was Luke and Cleopas, but nobody's actually 100% sure if it was Luke. Nobody, nobody's sure. But anyway, he meets two of the two disciples on the Emmaus road, and then he disappears you remember and then jesus appears to the disciples but when he does uh thomas is not there thomas is not with them so then later on the disciples meet again they tell thomas about it he doesn't believe it then jesus appears again to the disciples and this time thomas was there and Thomas, Thomas repents. And uh, he makes this incredible statement, um, my Lord and my God, which summed everything up. So he went from the, the outhouse, so to speak, to the penthouse. And then, as you know, Jesus uh, visited with the disciples and others to give them the great commission and that's found at the end of Matthew, Mark, and Luke. His last words at the end of those three books, if you put them together, that is the Great Commission. And then the next major event happens, the ascension of Christ. And the ascension had to occur so that the Holy Spirit could be sent. And the significance of that is obvious. Um, 
At the time Jesus ascended to heaven, the disciples had not changed. They had not changed on the inside. And the only way for a person to change on the inside is through the power of the Holy Ghost. And when you get born again, the Holy Spirit comes from glory and he enters your spirit man and you become a child of God for eternity. That is called being born again. The Greek phrase is ganeo anathem. It means to be generated or born from above. If someone is not born again, they are not a child of God, even though they are a big fan of Jesus and even though they're good people and they go to church, they are not born again. And in John chapter 3, Jesus said, you must be born again. In addition, the uh, day of Pentecost and the, the rise of the Holy Ghost was to endue or clothe you with the supernatural power to do the works of Christ. And that was the purpose of it. It's fantastic. And so that was the timeline after the resurrection. And 50 days later, boom, you have the day of Pentecost where the Holy Spirit descends, takes over the church, and then administers the estate of Jesus. The estate of Jesus was given to him by Father. And Father gave him everything. Jesus said, everything the Father has is mine. <laughs> That's a lot. And the Holy Spirit administers. He's the executor of the estate of God's Holy Son. And that's why you can be healed today. And you can be delivered today. Because the Holy Spirit is administering the benefits of the living Christ. Everything comes through the Spirit of God. And it comes through the throne room of the Lord Jesus. Go with me, if you will, to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. This is Paul's take on the resurrection of Christ. And it's really interesting. It says, if Jesus is not risen for the, from the dead, okay, he's making an assumption here. Because people had come into the church at Corinth, and they were teaching there was no resurrection. Some of them taught the resurrection was already passed. There was a lot of false doctrines about the resurrection coming up because it was such a spectacular teaching. No one had ever raised from the dead before and actually been seen numerous times. It had never happened before. Uh, there were there were stories of religious leaders in the past raising from the dead and so on, and different gods coming down and dying and raising from the dead, but there was never any actual proof of it. So Paul goes on to say in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, that's the resurrection chapter. I hope you'll read, that, read the whole chapter today. It's really interesting. He says, if Jesus is not raised from the dead, we have no guarantee of a resurrection. Our preaching, he said, is vain. It's useless. It's valueless. If there's no resurrection, Paul said, we are a pack of liars running around telling people that Jesus was raised from the dead when, it, when in fact he wasn't. If there's no resurrection, Paul said, we are still living in our sins. We are unsaved. Verse 17. If there's, no, if there's no resurrection, Paul said, the people who have died before us, they've all perished. Everybody went to hell. There's no salvation. There's no eternal life. We have no hope, verse 19. We are among men the most miserable because we preach this crazy doctrine of the resurrection, and it wasn't true. He says we're fools. and it's all a farce. And all the promises of God are actually lies. Because if the resurrection is a lie, all the other promises of God are also lies. If there's no resurrection from the dead, Paul says in chapter 15, hey, all the prophecies are fake. 
all the prophecies of Christ being raised from the dead are fake. It's all lies. That's what he's saying. None of it is true. Nothing is true. But if he's raised from the dead, then that means just the opposite. We have joy. We are not miserable. We are intelligent and full of wisdom. We are not fools. Everything is not a farce. We have complete hope in our future. The, pre, the people who have had faith in Christ before us, who have already died, do have hope. They have not perished. They are alive. They are in heaven. We are not in our sins anymore. This is a crucial issue. Because when the Holy Spirit comes into you, your body, he goes to your spirit man, and your spirit man becomes perfect and pure and sinless. So that when God looks at you, he sees a sinless person. He sees someone who's sinless because your spirit man is sinless. Now, you may have committed sin with your body. You might have committed a sin with something you said. You may be having sinful thoughts. That's all true. But your spirit man doesn't have those things. And that's one of the reasons Christians cannot be possessed by demons. As you know, the demons get into the body or the brain causing a mental or physical illness. But demons can't get into the spirit man of a Christian. And therefore, a Christian cannot be possessed by demons. They can be infected, but not possessed. And the resurrection of Christ is the reason for your salvation, your anointing, and your power from God. Everything flows from heaven by the Holy Spirit through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And therefore, as it says in Hebrews chapter 4, you can come boldly before the throne of grace and you can obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. The Greek word for resurrection is anastasis. It means the uprising. And there he was, laying there, deader than the doornail, his body destroyed. Jesus said, this is my body broken for you. That's how we got our healings. That's how we got our deliverances. That's how we got our eternal home in heaven. And that's why it's guaranteed to happen. No questions asked. It's guaranteed to happen. And God showed you it was guaranteed to happen because Christ rose from the dead. Jesus rose from the dead. And you can't lose. You cannot lose. It's not possible. You cannot lose when Christ rose from the dead. 1 Corinthians 15, I want you to read it today. The resurrection of Christ provides you with your healing today. It provides you with your deliverance today. You can be cured of a mental illness today. Why? Christ rose from the dead. I have seen hundreds of people over the years cured of mental illnesses. Some of them so sick, they had schizophrenia or schizoaffective disorder. I've seen them completely cured. But none of it would have happened had it not been anastasis, rise from the dead. None of it would have happened. Nothing could happen. And that's why Christians celebrate the resurrection today. But you and I celebrate it year round. Every time at the Arizona Deliverance Center, we have a live service at the altar call after the teaching. Evil spirits fly out of people. Uh, you can watch it live if you want to, and you can hear it live. I leave my my microphone on. If you go to youtube.com slash house of healing AZ, you can watch the deliverance service. Now I do turn down the lights so that people can have some visual privacy because I don't want, you know, people staring at other people going through deliverance. You know, sometimes that's a little uncomfortable. It doesn't doesn't really look pretty sometimes, obviously. But 
even though the lights are turned down, the, the volume is on. You can hear hear what's happening. You can hear me uh, talking to the people. You can you can watch how the deliverances occur. It's right there, live, every Thursday night at seven o'clock Pacific time, every Friday night at seven p.m. Pacific time during our live services. Wednesday night we have a Zoom deliverance service that would never that would never be there if it weren't for the resurrection of Christ. Brother Rick and the hardcore ministry team were on that Zoom call. Demons are flying out of people left and right. It's utterly amazing how many people get delivered Wednesday night on the Zoom deliverance service. I hope you'll check it out. It's at six o'clock Pacific time. All the promises of God in Christ are yea and amen through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. This is my body broken for you. You can be healed today through the resurrection of Christ from the dead. This is what God has given you. This is the benefits of the incredible resurrection of Christ. It's unbelievable what God has done for you. Nobody else ever died and was risen from the dead. There's no proof of Buddha, Muhammad, anybody being raised from the dead. It's all theories. It's all religious manufacturing. Jesus actually rose from the dead with numerous eyewitnesses that saw it happen. And the disciples and the apostles all sacrificed their lives and were martyred because of the resurrection of Christ from the dead. What's interesting about this event, and it was the most important event in history, the people that saw it first were women. The woman who spoke to Jesus first was a woman. And the message of the cross could be summed up in Mary Magdalena. It says in Luke chapter 8, she had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities. And seven devils were cast out of her. Now, seven devils, is the, that's the Greek word daimon. It's, that's different from the Greek word uh, daimonian. So daimonian is a Greek word that describes all demons. It's a uh, catch-all term in Greek for any kind of demon without specification. Daimon is a Greek word for a demon of an upper level, of a higher class, in authority, in power. Mary Magdalena was probably a witch and or a whore. She had superpower demons, seven of them. Seven powerful controlling spirits were in that woman. And like the boy with severe physical and mental illnesses in Mark chapter 9, she was completely delivered. And unlike some people who go through deliverance or get healed, she always appreciated it. She always was grateful. And isn't it interesting, after the greatest event in the history of the world, she is the first one to talk to Jesus. She is. The women were the first one. And anybody knows who's in ministry, and I've been in ministry now for years, women are the most valuable asset in, in your ministry. I mean, the Deliverance Center, hardcore Christianity, uh, would, would almost really not exist if it wasn't for, for the loving volunteers of the women in my ministry. It just wouldn't happen. Women are the most important thing in your ministry. And the great thing about women is that they tend to be more spiritual and 
it's easier for women to have childlike faith and compassion for others than it is men. And generally speaking, obviously there's exceptions. Generally speaking, females make better better ministries than males. They tend to be a little more humble. They tend to be a little more compassionate. They tend to be more apt to show mercy. Uh, they, women have tremendous work ethics and endurance powers. What they don't usually have is machismo. And that's a horrible disease that Satan has where he thinks he's, as he said back in the 1940s, the cock of the roost. You know, you had the one rooster that was running the whole show and even running the other roosters. That's what the devil is. He thinks he's the cock of the roost. And women tend to not do that. And in our ministry, we, we could not exist if it wasn't for all the caring and loving women that work in our ministry. We have, we have some great guys there too, no question. But the women really are, are the backbone of the Arizona Deliverance Center. Uh, they're fantastic. And here you can see the women came to the tomb first. They talked to the angels. Mary Magdalena was the first one that saw Jesus. Quite remarkable. And nothing's changed now. It's, it's all basically the same. The women, the women are the ones who tend to carry the load and tend to be enormous assets in, in your ministry. Okay. You can't have a ministry if, if it's all men. It's just, it's just not going to happen. You're going to have testosterone problems. You're going to have machismo problems. You know, everything, everything has to be balanced. So it's better to have a ministry where it's balanced. You'll be far more successful that way. And uh, you'll be far, far more successful. Far more successful. And I recommend you, you allow that to happen in your ministry. Everybody who's dead will be resurrected. As you know, at the rapture, the saints of God are resurrected. When does the rapture occur? Pre-trib, post-trib, mid-trib? No one knows for sure. I, I kind of lean toward pre-trib, but nobody knows for sure. But the bottom line is every born-again Christian, every Christian with the Holy Spirit living here, gets resurrected just like Jesus by the same spirit. Everybody. You get resurrected from the dead after the millennial. Everyone else in history gets resurrected and stands before God at the great white throne judgment. Everybody. And at that resurrection, all the people who are unsaved, all the sinners throughout history, from Adam to now and into the future, whenever the resurrection occurs, all of them are resurrected and are judged for their sins. You remember the Heaven's Gate cult. They went with Hale Bob comment, comment years ago. They will all be resurrected erected after the millennial, and they will stand before God on Judgment Day. And they will face judgment and eternal hell. Do you remember the Jonestown disaster? Jim Jones. At the end of the millennium, most of these people will be resurrected and face judgment and damnation. They're alive right now. Remember, human beings never die. After death, they're more alive than they ever were during their life here on earth. And they are either waiting in hell for judgment day after the millennial, or they are in heaven 
with the Lord Jesus waiting to be resurrected with their, with their new supernatural heavenly body. All these people will be resurrected from the dead. All of the people that died during the Holocaust, all of the people who have died in all the wars, most of them will be resurrected at the end of the millennial and stand before God at the great white throne judgment. Nobody escapes. No one gets away. Every human being is going to be resurrected from the dead. Every single one of them. Aborted babies, infants, toddlers that died in their youth, all of them are resurrected resurrected at the time of the rapture and received new heavenly bodies. All this occurred because of the sacrifice of Christ on the cross guaranteed by the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. As long as you are alive, it is not too late for you to be healed and delivered and saved. As long as you are alive, as long as you're breathing, there is hope for you. Why? The resurrection of Jesus from the dead. Behold, he is alive forevermore. The resurrection was predicted in Psalms. King David, it was Job mentioned the resurrection. He said, I know that my Redeemer lives. And King David said, Thou shalt not leave my soul in hell. But, and he didn't. He was raised from the dead forevermore. Your prayers are guaranteed to be heard. I know this is going to sound nuts, but even if you don't believe your own prayers, and what is the world? What, do, what in the world is Brother Mike talking about? This is going to sound crazy to you, but I've noticed this to be true. Most Christians pray prayers they don't actually believe. And that's why most prayers are not answered. Most people don't get an answer to their prayers. Because when they pray them, they're, they're praying in them with doubt. Okay? Conversely, the ones that pray with no doubts and no unbelief, they pray with pistis is the Greek word for faith. It means to believe with no doubts and no unbelief. People who pray like that, all their prayers get answered. Now or later or eventually, somehow, doesn't matter. God works it out for you. If you pray with pistis and you do not doubt. But most people don't do that. They pray and they have a sense of doubt in their soul or they're praying out of a nervous reaction, or they're praying with hope. I hope this prayer gets answered. Hope doesn't work like that. Hope is future tense. Praying for something is present tense. You got to have pistis faith for present tense prayers. Your hope are the benefits of Christ in the future that have been guaranteed to you, such as your eternal life, your rapture, resurrection, your home in heaven, your home in the new Jerusalem, your new job serving Christ during the millennium, all of that in the future is our hope based on the word of God and the promises of God. But because of the resurrection, you are able, well able, to go into the throne room, Hebrews chapter 4. You can go in there full of faith, aggressive, and get your prayers answered. Let us therefore come boldly before the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Okay? When you understand the resurrection of Christ ended everything for the devil, it's over. And your prayers are guaranteed to be heard. Now, they may not be answered right away, but your prayers are 100% heard. Okay? 
a question about it, and they're all guaranteed to be heard by God. And the resurrection of Christ, you can't lose. You cannot lose. You're going to win. And there's nothing the devil can do to stop it. Your faith and the resurrection of Christ brings you absolute victory. You, you cannot lose.